Jared Polin fro knows photo.com here with a raw edit of the week week 13 I think it's been a lot of weeks I hope you guys are enjoying editing these raw files I know that Greg and I enjoy uh, going at each other and seeing who can come up with a better edit or a different edit I think it's going pretty well and I think you guys are enjoying it so that's why we're going to keep doing it and you keep sending those files in so anyway we have this shot today by Nelly Trot Nielsen it's a uh, raw file shot with the Nikon D3100, 1 second F3.5 ISO 100 with the 18 to 55 3556. I would venture to say that this is shot on a, a tripod. Let me see if everything's sharp. Something sharp. Yeah, the glasses are sharp right about here. So that would lead me to believe that this has to be on a tripod, especially at one second. Um, the framing and composition are nice. I like to see how the book is kind of even on both sides, but the glasses aren't right down the middle, and the background is nice and blown out. Uh, I, I would like to see a little more about this. Um, it's interesting with the 18 to 55, but let's see what we can do with the exposure, and if we're going to go with color or black and white or crop or not crop or things like that. Hey, look, hey, color. And what's next? Contrast. Boom, ba doom, ba doom. Black and white. Somebody asked me the other day, why do I not hit the button for black and white versus color? I, I, I don't know. It's just a habit for me to sit here and go like this. Just a habit. No particular reason. Don't think I get any particular benefit from that that I wouldn't get from just hitting the button. I'm going to reset again. I want to see what I can do with this color and see if we can do some funky Cole Medina with it. All right, so I'm just tweaking a little bit of this. Too much green, so I want to add some magenta. Too much, I want to add a little bit more yellow. Or do we want it to be realistic and less yellow uh, that it wasn't fluorescent lights? I like that. Well, let's boomify it a little bit with some more boomification of the contrast. Our black levels pumped up a little bit. Mr. Fill Light, we're not touching. And let's see. Ooh, some vibrance and saturation screw it let's do it i know it's awkward but let's let's play with it a little bit here i like that i like that let's see where it started yeah we've come a long way look how much cleaner it now looks uh let's look in people ask me about my general sharpening rule uh thing so here let's zoom in over here and see the amount is 45 1 39 70 that's just a general sharpening that's very minimal uh, I know I'm sure Greg has a different sharpening thing. I just don't mess with sharpening that much. I just don't. I don't over sharpen. I'm not a a tweaker like that. But that's just me. Oh, I forgot to do some clarity. Let's pump the clarity up slightly. There we go. You know, I'm not sure that there's a ton to do with this photo, but you could go black and white. You could go color. You could do HDR. You could crop a little bit. You could play with sepia tones or other tones. So I want to see what you guys come up with. Come up with something cool this week. I really want to see some interesting things inside the forum post. And by the way, Greg's going to talk about this probably on the show or something, or I'm going to send out an email about it. But if you're not in the forum, you can now connect with Facebook and or your Twitter account. So be sure to do that. Uh, that's a good way and an easy way to remember your login and password and get involved in the forum, which is a cool place that people go to learn. So I'm still looking here to see if there's any more tweaking I want to do. Now, I like bumping the exposure slightly. I bet you Greg will go with vignetting and stuff. I'm not a vignetting fan no matter what. So that's where I'm going to leave it. Let's see what Greg does or did or whoever went first or second. I'm not sure. Coming up next, Greg and I go after each other. Maybe. I don't know what he did yet. Let's see what he did to see if we have a little back and forth about this. Uh, so that's it. See you in a minute. Bye. Well, well. Kind of a different photo this week, huh? I like it. Kind of reminds me of a cool product photo. And uh, I definitely have a black and white feeling on it. So I think I'm going right to black and white. And I'm in a tone curve kind of mood, I think. I think I've been in that kind of mood a lot lately. 
been doing that with a lot of my editing and it's going right to tone curve and seeing what happens unfortunately this image seems to be a little underexposed so I'm gonna open it up by about a stop and see what happens let's bring this back there we go now it's starting to open up a little bit more getting a little more contrasty the back here seems a little too bright to me my eyes are being drawn there instead of here which would be the product kind of area the glasses so let's darken that a bit definitely not with green but we can reset that and bring it back color we need to choose our color as black run this hold on if i could just remember how to do that there that's definitely too much but faded a little bit that's better. It just darkens it a little bit and let's see. Let's see if I like that or not. I might come back and retouch that and change it again. But in the meantime, you know what I want to try? I want to try and play with my white balance. Because white balance doesn't matter when you have a black and white photo, but it can really make some interesting results. when we go to the extreme like that would you have ever guessed that bringing your white balance all the way down to 2000 would have produced that result I wouldn't have pretty cool huh so let's zoom in again see there it's blown out I don't know if I like that or not I think I was I think I like it best down in here. But I kind of like that that blown out feel. Hopefully you're paying attention to what I'm changing as I'm changing it cuz I'm not really talking about it much today, am I? I'm just kind of doing it. I'm just kind of feeling it and yeah, I think I'm close to being there. I think it has enough contrast. My blacks are definitely way high. As you see, I really don't have any highlights though. Let's see if I can open up those highlights of hair maybe. There is it's contrasty. There we're really getting a lot of contrast, a lot of That's better. I like that. I think it has a lot more interest now you can really see the label there I wish that label wasn't upside down um, if it was a product photograph that would definitely be something that I would change um, same with the lighting I think the lighting being strong back here uh, again I'm keep coming back to that product photograph thing is a little distracting so I think Concentrating that light more in the foreground next time might help that. Um, something that I always think about as I'm working or as I'm shooting something. I think my detail looks good. Um, obviously, adding a little sharpening here and there will enhance the text. There we go. Just enough. I don't think we need any lens corrections, anything like that. So, I think we will move on. Here's mine. Let's see how we both did. See ya. All right, and we're back, and Greg's video just went on the blip. There it is. It's back. It's uh, back. So, yeah, so I guess I went with color, and you went with black and white. I think this is the first time that's happened. Would you agree? Um. Yeah, because you know how I'm strong into black and white, and you tend to be strong into flatness. Come on, give me a break. I am giving uh, you a break. That that photo was so contrasty. Yours or mine? Yeah. No, mine. What do you think mine is? I think yours has a good white balance. Yeah. yeah it almost looks sepia or something. Well, I, I, see, what I ended up doing was I pulled back on the, on the yellows 
Because at first I bumped up my my white balance to make it more yellow. And then I was like, nah, let's see what happens the other way. And when I did the other way, it looked more realistic. And then I bumped up the vibrance and saturation. And I was like, yeah, I like that a lot. So that, that's how I came up with mine. Is saturation your middle name? Uh, no, contrast and boomify is my middle name. <laughs> Well, can you tell what I did to mine? Yeah. I know what you did to yours. What I do? Well, at first at first I I almost said um I almost said vignette, but then I looked at the bottom corners and noticed that it wasn't and then I thought you I I think you burned in the left and right corners. Yeah, it needed it cuz my eyes are just trailing right off the page cuz of that that constant white color and so it needed to be burned. Yeah, I, I, did you burn it or what? Uh, yeah, kind of. As much as you can in Lightroom, I use the gradient tool with the set with the exposure. Yeah, I guess I'm now seeing yours and seeing mine that way. I, I guess, but I, I like the brightness in the background of mine. I I guess the, I mean the focal point is obviously the uh, the glasses and the background's blown out. Pretty amazing with that kit lens, isn't it? Yeah, I would agree. But as as I'm sure you noted in your video. The fact that it's a stop and a half under or two stops under obviously isn't ideal. Well, yeah, I, I don't think I mentioned it. I just went and bumped my uh, went, bumped my exposure. But what does it tell us what mode this was shot in? Yeah, it was shot in manual. But I think the problem is is the spot metering that was used that uh, metered it under. And mm -hmm. the way to fix that is to pay attention to your histogram. Right, Jared? No, I'm shaking my head anyway. No. <laughs> you, the way to pay attention to that is to get your exposure proper and make sure that it's right. Because well, your histogram looked okay on the on the screen. Yeah, but your histogram could still be messed up in the like it you know when it's flat across the middle, it may be a whatever. You still have to judge the histogram per each image. This is a great case where you had this huge black blank spot on the right of an image and it probably looked fine when you first look at it. But look at that histogram. You're going to know that it's two stops under. <sighs> exactly. Am I boring you to death? Well, guess what? You, you need to learn it, damn it. Well, I'm never learning the histogram because I, I'm not a histogram follower. You will. You will. I will turn you. I'm telling you. You'll, Greg, it hasn't happened to this point. It will not happen. It will. But let me ask you something moving forward. It said one second. Do you think this was handheld or propped up or what? No, I, it had to have been uh, propped up. It's too sharp to for, to for one second. Yeah, it's too sharp for a one second exposure to be. You know, zoom in there somewhere. You'll see that the text and everything is is really sharp, or at least as sharp as that lens is gonna get. Yeah, so you can no see a little bit of the handle. distortion. Yeah, it doesn't bother me. No, I I don't care. I was just pointing it out. Yeah, that, that really didn't bother me. But I, Although, after looking at my photo again, and this photo in general, I think it needs a crop. Yeah. Well, you know what crop. I wanted to say? I dare you. I dare you to crop it. Well, give me a minute. I wanted to get to something, though. You know, back to the propping thing and how you can do that and, and, and a tool that actually works that I just used in Florida quite a bit. The, uh, the Gorilla Pod. You know that one? How well does it work with the D3S? Well, hold on. Let me let me get the thing. All right. Here here's the Gorilla Pod, and this isn't a paid publication or a paid advertisement. Is so, it on your head yet? No. Hold on. This I is a Gorilla see, Pod. So I have to take your word for it. Yeah. <laughs> the Gorilla Pod is a great tool to take with you on the road, as I just took it with me to Florida. It is made by a company named Joby. They do not pay me to say this, but. I wish they did. I wish they did pay us to say this, but yeah, how does it work with the D3S? Uh, it kind of basically flattened to the table because I had the D3S and the 24 to 70. If I had the D3S and like a, a 16 fisheye on it, I think I could have made it work. Or if I had more time to play with it, it probably wouldn't have flattened out. But it was perfect with the D7000, which means it would be perfect for a D3100. Yep. Um, you know, it's a really cool tool for me. I didn't want to take any, I mean, I don't want to tell you why I took it, but, or get into it, but I, I really didn't want to take a big tripod to Florida. So I took the uh, gorilla pod and was really happy with it. So you want me to crop this? Yeah, let's try a crop. I think it just needs a little bit under the bottom there. Oh, let me go to develop. 
How do we do this, Greg? Use the R key brings you into the crop tool. Or I could just click on that. Yeah, and then make sure the little lock is off. Lock is off, okay. And just drag the bottom up to the words. Will my computer blow up if I do this? No, I promise. Yeet. There? No, a little lower, right? A little lower, yep. There you go. And That's that, better. And But what kind of ratio is this? Yeah, so what? As I always say, so what? If you take your pictures to a good picture framer, they, they don't care about a real ratio. I care about the ratio. They can crop anything. They can, they, you know, they can do anything. It shouldn't matter. You know, it's all about free form and doing what you think. So I think you should crop mine and then post it as is cropped. No, you didn't do it in the video, Greg. That would be cheating. But with, so that, with that being said, that means that the readers can do their own cropping and sepia toning and whatever you want to do to it. So CP will be good. Do that. Post it in the form. Don't forget that Greg just added Facebook connectivity and Twitter connectivity to the forum. So now you can you can enter the forum that way and become a member and yeah, take part in all these things. Is this locked? Can you only get it if you're a member of the forum, Greg? You have to be able to, yeah, you have to be a member of the forum in order to download the file. And this is raw file number 13 already. Amazing. We've been doing this for longer. over three months, four months. Longer than yeah. that, but it's the first, you know, we started people uh, letting them download it. So I'm going to wrap it up. Anything else you wanted to say, Greg? No, that's it. All right. So, yeah, cool photo. Thank you for sending it in. We're like 350 behind right now in the email. Uh, but you can send them to froknosephoto at gmail.com. I may start skipping around in there and just start finding interesting ones to pull out and edit, or maybe we'll edit quite a few of them in a row for fun. So that that's all I got. Let's see what you guys get. Log into the forum. Uh, I think you guys can come up with some interesting things. Have fun with it. So cool photo. Thanks for sending it in, Greg. Thank you. Greg? Hello. I said thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya.